Le Chatier's principle is an observation about chemical equilibria of reactions. It is the equilibrium law, and it can be used to predict the effect of a change in the conditions on some equili chemical equilibria. So what the principle states is that when a system is at equilibrium and it is subjected to a stress, the change in concentration, temperature, volume, or pressure, the, shift, the system will shift its equilibrium point in order to relieve the stress. After the equilibrium has been stressed and reestablished, there are new set of product and reactant concentration. We are going to practice uh, Le Chatier's principle using the chemical reaction of the formation of ammonia, where we have three moles of hydrogen gas react with one mole of nitrogen gas to produce two moles of ammonia and 22 kilojoules of energy. Notice that our value of energy is written as a part of our chemical reaction. It is a product of our chemical reaction. So what this means is that we have an exothermic reaction. And because it's an exothermic reaction, temperature changes are going to affect this reaction in a specific way. And we'll get there in a moment. So we're going to fill in this chart and we're going to look at a stress on the system. So assume that your system is already at equilibrium. We're already at equilibrium and uh, we have our constant concentrations of product versus reactant. And we're going to stress the system by using one of these stressors. Once we stress the system, equilibrium has got to shift either towards the products or the reactants in order to help relieve the stress of the system. Once the equilibrium has been reestablished, we now have new concentrations of reactants and products once the equilibrium has been established. So we're going to fill out this chart based on the stress of the system and what happens after equilibrium has been reestablished. All right, so here we have adding nitrogen or adding hydrogen. What we can say here is that we are increasing the concentration of our reactant. Okay, so if I add nitrogen to the system and that is essentially an increase of one of our reactants, if you add more reactant and there's plenty of, of uh, the, other, the other partner in the reaction, then the reaction is going to shift forward to get rid of some of that nitrogen and form more product. So the equilibrium is going to shift forward. Once equilibrium has been established, you now have a decrease in the nitrogen and a decrease in the hydrogen because we have now formed more ammonia as a result of this stress. Adding hydrogen gives the same type of situation because hydrogen is also a reactant. So if I add hydrogen, my equilibrium is going to shift to produce more product. It's going to go to the right. That's going to use up the nitrogen and the hydrogen so their concentrations go down and then the concentration of ammonia goes up. All right. <clears throat> Adding ammonia. Adding ammonia is essentially increasing the concentration of our product. So, if I add ammonia to the system, is there any need to make more product if, I've, if there's additional product in the system? No. So by Adding more ammonia, 
the reaction is going to shift to the left to relieve that stress. And as a result, as a result, we form more reactant. And so the concentration of nitrogen and the concentration of hydrogen increase. Well, being that we used up the ammonia that we added in there to relieve the stress, the concentration of ammonia goes down. All right. The next two stresses involve decreasing the concentration of reactant. All right. So let's say I get rid of one of my reactants out of the reaction mixture. Well, if there's no reactant, no product can be formed. So to relieve this stress on the system, the reaction shifts to the left to replenish the nitrogen gas that was removed. So if I'm replenishing that nitrogen gas, then after the reestablishment of equilibrium, nitrogen concentration and hydrogen concentration increase. Well, where did, how did they increase? Well, they used up the ammonia to form those. So the ammonia concentration decreases. The same happens if I remove hydrogen gas because it is also a reactant. It will have the same type of effect on the equilibrium. Let's see what happens now if we decrease the concentration of a product. Okay, so essentially I get rid of my ammonia. Well, if I constantly remove the product from my reaction mi mixture, it's gonna continually drive the reaction forward to make more and more product. So what happens? Our equilibrium shifts forward. We use up our reactants and their concentration goes down and we end up forming more product. Okie dokie. Now we're gonna take a look at temperature changes. Okay, well, Remember we mentioned that this is an exothermic reaction. For an exothermic reaction, remember heat energy is a product. If we were looking at an endothermic reaction, heat energy would be a reactant. So the same thing that we see for the increase of a reactant or the decrease of a reactant or a product is the same effect that we would have with an increase and decrease in temperature. All right, so since this is an exothermic reaction and energy is a product, we can take a look at increasing temperature is for an exothermic reaction. This is also going to be increasing the product, right? So if I increase the product, what happens when I increase product? Can we go back up to here to ammonia? All right, well, if I increase the product, then that means my reaction shifts to the left to relieve, to relieve the stress. And when I do that, I end up forming reactant and um, reducing the amount of product, okay? So for an exothermic reaction, the increase in temperature is just like an increase in the product. That's the reverse for an endothermic reaction. So let's take a look at the decrease in temperature. So being that we're looking at an exothermic reaction, a decrease in temperature would be just like decreasing the product because heat energy is a product. So let's take a look as we go up. We already looked at the removal of a product when we removed our ammonia. So it ha we're going to have the same effect on our equilibrium. The equilibrium is going to shift forward. We're going to use up that nitrogen and hydrogen to form more product. And heat is another 
one of those uh, products. So we're going to end up forming more heat. So the opposite is true for an endothermic reaction. If I decrease the temperature on an endothermic reaction, it's just like increasing the product and we'll have the opposite effect. Okay, increasing the pressure and decreasing the pressure is only going to have an effect on gaseous reactants and products. Why? Because we cannot compress a solid, you cannot compress a liquid. So if we decrease the volume by increasing the pressure, then gases become compressed in the reaction mixture. And in order to relieve that stress, the reaction mixture is going to shift to the side of the reaction with the fewer number of moles of gas. So let's take a look at our, our chemical reaction here. And we see that we have four moles of gas on our reactant side and two moles of gas on our product side. So if I was to increase the pressure or decrease the volume, then that means my reaction is gonna to shift to the side with the fewer number of moles. So we have less pressure on the system, right? So that means we're gonna shift forward. And as a result, we're going to decrease the reactant concentrations while the product concentration increases. If we alternately decrease the pressure and increase the volume. That means that the reaction vessel gets larger and the gas, any gas is going to fill up as much volume as it possibly can. So the reaction is going to shift to the side of, um, it's going to shift to the side where there's more moles of gas. So for this reaction, if I decrease the pressure, which direction is the equilibrium going to shift? Correct to the left. And when the equilibrium shifts to the left, I'm going to increase the concentration of my reactants and decrease the concentration of my products. Now we'll take a look at a problem that encompasses everything that we've looked at. It's a little bit more difficult not one that you're really going to be tested on, but something that I want you to, take a, to think about. Let's read the problem. At 800 degrees Celsius, the equilibrium constant for the following reaction is 0 0.279. Let's think about that. That is uh, it's less than 1, so that means the reverse reaction is favored. Okay. Let's read on. The reaction is between carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas to form water and carbon monoxide. We're also given the information that the delta H of this reaction is positive, positive 42.6 kilojoules per mole. Okay, well that information tells me that this is an endothermic reaction. And if it's endothermic, then that means that the energy or the heat energy is a reactant. Okay, so we know that this reaction, the, the reverse reaction is favored and energy is a reactant as it's endothermic. The question now says that at a different temperature, the equilibrium constant is 0 0.100. So that's even, even more less than one. And um, the reaction would really rather not go forward at all. So it's, it's forced more in reverse. Okay, so our question says, is this different temperature higher or lower than 800 degrees Celsius? And give your reasoning. 
Okay, let's think about it. What does temperature tell us? Remember, if the temperature changes on an equilibrium, the equilibrium is going to shift from left to right. Notice that the equilibrium constant says that the, more, the reaction went more in reverse. So if the equilibrium shifted, oh. if the equilibrium shifted to the left, because we know that we produced much less product, right? It's much less product. Then if the equilibrium shifts to the left, and the question is asking about energy, whether the temperature is higher or lower, we know that this is an endothermic reaction. What is the only thing that can cause the endothermic reaction to shift to the left? Not only thing, but what in terms of temperature can you do to make an endothermic sh reaction shift to the left? Well, if I remove one of our reactants, I can shift this, re this reaction to the left. And that means that if I remove some energy, which is one of my reactants, then I can shift this reaction to the left. And if I remove energy, then that means that our new temperature, T2, is less than T1. All right? So let's write that out a little bit in words. So since let's say K2 is much less than K1, reactants are more favored. More favored. After the stress. So um, a decrease in reactants will shift the reaction towards the left. And since we're talking about energy, a decrease in temperature will shift the reaction to the left. 